of course I'm all right. But my purse, Mac. I'll have Enright put the purse snatching detail on it right away. Is that all you do, just put the purse snatching detail on it? Well, that's our normal procedure, but uh, if you want special attention... Uh... Oh, no, no. I just want to be as satisfied as any other woman that you have to handle. I'll see that you're not neglected. Okay. Thanks, Mac. Bye-bye. expected Mac to do, but he certainly did do it, didn't he? Well, he is the police commissioner, you know. I know, but I didn't expect it to get here before I did. Wasn't that sweet of him to surprise me like this? You're surprised. The front doorbell rings, I answer the door, and there's nothing there, just this purse. Couldn't the policeman have waited until I'd gotten there? I mean, I would have given him a cup of coffee or something. Hey, you don't suppose the word is out on my coffee, do you? Mildred, I don't think anything is missing. Well, what's that? Oh, that's a candy heart. You're always nibbling, aren't you? I didn't put that there. Mac must have put it there. I love you. I love you too, Mac. I didn't put this in your purse, Sally. Who else would? I didn't even know the purse snatching detail had found it. No, sir, we didn't find it. Frankly, we didn't even have a lead. But we did put out a description of the purse snatcher. OK, and right, thanks. Well, how did my purse get here? Are you sure nothing's missing? Just something added. I love you. I love you, too. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Maybe when the purse snatcher saw my ID, he realized you'd be involved in the case, and so he brought my purse back. No. Maybe it was just somebody that was very honest but didn't want to get involved. Why would anybody honest want to snatch a purse? Very good point. Mac, do you know, the whole time that I was out today, I had the strangest feeling that someone was watching me. As if he was following me. It was very weird. He? I don't know why I said he. I looked back a couple of times and I never saw anybody that looked suspicious. Was this before your purse was grabbed? Mm-hmm. But the thief came from in front of me. Then anybody watching you would have been behind you. Mm-hmm. You would have seen the whole thing. He. Yeah. Oh. Did I hear right? Hello. We found a man who fits the description Mrs. McMillan gave us of the purse snatcher. Blonde hair, scar on his chin. All right, put him in a line of him, Sally. Can... Oh, I see. Well, we have no other choice. All right. That's him. They found him in a vacant lot, sir. He'd been strangled. Five purse snatching wraps, four convictions. Now, there's nothing unusual about him grabbing somebody's purse. Well, but whoever murdered him and returned the purse with a candy message of love is unusual. A little unbalanced, wouldn't you say, sir? But Dr. Voigt can help us find a behavior pattern. What we're looking for is a troubled mind. I think we have to consider the probability it's somebody Sally already knows. Perhaps encounters almost every time she goes out. Then I probably know him, too. He didn't return the purse openly because he murdered the man who stole it. Right. Otherwise, he'd have wanted the credit for finding it, the recognition. 
Well, you know, Sally had the feeling she was being followed, so he must have been right behind when the purse was grabbed. Yeah, saw the whole thing. But why? Oh, thanks for the... Well, possibly somebody with his own little fantasy about Sally. And probably all quite innocent until he saw the purse snatcher give her a shove. But then he acted in rage because he doesn't want anybody to hurt her. So he killed the man he thought hurt her? Which means the fantasy is becoming a reality. And I think the sooner you locate him, the better. Mac, if the person that was following me was someone that I recognized, I would have recognized him. Well, if you didn't spot him, you wouldn't. Do you really think that it's someone that I know? I have to consider it. I felt so foolish yesterday, being filmed with all those nice men. They didn't know they were being photographed. No, but I did. None of them has ever done anything out of the way. Not even so much as a glance. Not to your face, no. That's why we have to see what they do behind your back. That's Joe Marley. I have been going to that station for years, and I never knew that Joe went every time that I left. He obviously appreciates your business. Mac. <laughs> Sam the Lobster Man. Yeah. Never could sell a lobster without first bidding it fond to do. That would appear to be a somewhat emotional response. Maybe so, but he couldn't kill anyone. Our favorite waiter. Ingo only likes me because you overtip. Casey, isn't he the man you forced to resign from the police department? That's right. I didn't know he was working as a bank guard these days. He told me he also moonlights as a night watchman. I thought he was going to try and be a private detective. Didn't he open up an office on Geary Street? Yeah, it didn't work out. Casey's just a good friend. Yeah. I remember him once telling me that a, a man could look a lifetime to find a girl like you. Dear old Henry. Do you know that I've known Henry since... I've known Henry since before I knew you. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Any of those faces look familiar? The faces, no. The looks, yes. It could be any of them, sir. Marion, what are the chances it could be a stranger? Well, it's highly unlikely a stranger's gonna murder someone for Sally's purse. I'm afraid it's probably someone we've seen. Mac, it just can't be one of those men. It can't. Can it? Did you see anyone else that day that you know, perhaps spoke with? No. Mac? We'll find out who it is. You and Mac are two of my dearest friends, and nothing's going to happen to you if I can help it. And I know I can. I've been told that Marion often works overtime for your office at the expense of some of her wealthier clients. Well, we pay her by the hour, just like any other client. Pretty steep fee, too. You know, I never realized that Marion considered us such close friends, especially since she's only been over to dinner just a few times. Oh, and then we did take her to the football game that one time. Of course, you've known her longer than I have. 
I never took her out, Sally. Oh, she's the one. One what? The one you never took out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, process of elimination. Are you ready? Ready. Um, for the lobster man. Sam Hill. Yeah. Sam, Sam, the lobster man. All right, on the day it happened, he was at his lobster bin on Fisherman's Wharf until after dark. So that eliminates him. Mm. Joe Marley. The fellow at the service station. It's very interesting. Right after Mrs. McMillan drove off, he told his boss that he had a toothache, and then he left. Now, I've checked with his dentist. He didn't go to him that day. Any idea where he went? Yep. Later on, he was seen at a bar known as Kim's Corner, where he ordered a double bourbon with a beer chaser. You mean after the purse snatching? Yes, sir, about an hour after. Enough time to kill a man and deliver Sally's purse to our house. What about Casey? The bank closed at three. After that, Casey was footloose. We don't know where he went. Henry. Who? Uh, the magazine man. Oh. Oh, well, he was supposedly at his newsstand from morning till night. But periodically, he takes a break, closes up. Now, that break can last anywhere from five minutes to an hour. Another possibility. Now, our last suspect, Ingo, the waiter. Now, the only time he had off was the break between lunch and dinner. He lives alone at the Manchester, but he didn't go back there that day, which he usually does. We're not getting anywhere, Sergeant. Have you noticed? Yes. But it takes time, Well, sir. we haven't got time. Four out of five of these could be our man, and our man is apparently a maniac in love with my wife. Good night, Sally. Good night, Mary. Mac? Huh? Are you asleep yet? Not quite. You know that man who thinks he's in love with me? You think he's crazy? Well, I... Well, not because he's in love with you. I mean, if that were the test for insanity, I'd already be locked up. You're pretty nice, you know that?
the stairs. <sighs> Mrs. McMillan, there was somebody in this house. Good thinking, Mildred. Did you get a look at him, Mac? No. Are you sure you're all right? I never said I was all right. I said I fell down the stairs. Oh. Well, in that case, are you all right? Terrific. Mac, look at this. Flowers in front of my picture. You must be out of candy hearts. You're going to get more than a 24-hour guard in your house. I want every available man in the department on this case. You know, you seem more upset about this than Mac is. The murder of a petty criminal is one thing. Breaking into the house of a police commissioner is another ball game. The next thing you know, it could be the mayor or an alderman. Or the DA. Right. Well, obviously, whoever it is, he's out after big fish, and I want him nailed. <laughs> you mix a nice metaphor, Chapman. Do I have a trait you don't admire? You know he's wrong about the motive for the break-in, don't you? Dead wrong. Hello, hi. Sally? Mac. Why did you scream last night? Who is this? I wouldn't hurt you. Don't you know that? Who are you? I want to meet you, Sally. All right, where would you like to meet? You mustn't bring anyone with you. You must come alone. Of course, just tell me where and I'll be there. Soho Bar and Grill at noon. Mac, you can't get him that way and you know it. And you're not going to meet him and I told you that when you called. Mac! It's out of the question. You want to find him, don't you? And I plan to. How? By being at the Soho Bar and Grill. Hello, Commissioner. Commissioner. Mrs. McMillan, this is policewoman Ella McKay. How do you we, uh, uh, we had to borrow one of your dresses. Well, did you have to borrow my favorite one? Oh, I'll be as careful with it as I can, Mrs. McMillan. No. Mac, it's just not going to work with anyone else but me. Come here, Ellen. Now, look, what do you think, Henry? I'm afraid Mrs. McMillan is right, sir. Why? They're almost the same height. They look alike. And it's dark in there. I think we have a chance. <clears throat> Will somebody say something? Mac, I don't ask to get involved in your cases, but I'm involved in this one whether we like it or not. All right, Sally. This is the way it has to be. Looking for somebody, little lady? Yes, I am. You just found us, sweetheart. Well, actually, I'm supposed to be meeting someone here. That's right, baby doll. Me. Jack Tibble, Wholesale Meats, Des Moines. Meats with your approval. <laughs> Clever, huh? Clever, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, if you think that's good, let me tell you a story. 
I tell you the story about the Pope who was going down the street and the little lady was on the side. And... Hey, watch where you're going. Where you? Mister, we don't want no trouble well, here. You can't do this to me. I Come get on, friends of the mine. Come on. I'm a United States citizen. I saw how rude that man was to you. If they hadn't thrown him out, I would have done something myself. Care to join me at my table? Oh, uh... It's very lonely out. Have you noticed? Even in the daylight. Join me, please. All right. Afternoon, Soho. Mrs. McMillan? I'll see if I can find a Mrs. McMillan. Hold on, sir. I believe it's him. Hello, sir. Are you there? This is oh, your yes, friend. Perhaps uh, he I was told to Mrs. Us. McMillan was in the ladies' lounge. She'll be. Oh, here she comes now. So she'll be right with you. One moment. Why is he calling? He was probably checking to make sure you're here. And I tracing the call. Can't you hurry the trace? Uh, just one moment, sir. She's on her way. Well, I have to talk to him, Mac. He's not going to stall forever. No. Mac, he's not going to wait there. I have to talk to him. where Joe Marley works. Stall him as long as you can. Yes, sir. Johnson, take Mrs. McMillan home. Uh, what was the name, sir? Please come at lunch. Should have been back by now. Where does he eat? Could be anywhere. Commissioner! Suppose you speak to me. I'm her husband. She's there with you, isn't she? I know she's there. What is it you want? She tried to trick me. She betrayed me. And I loved her. Was it him? Yeah. Asking for Sally. Joe Marley would know this number. What's going on, Commissioner? Somebody trying to hold us up? Where have you been for the past hour, Joe? Lunch. Why? Where'd you eat? In my car. Here, well, take a look. I still got a half a pastrami sandwich left. Anybody want it? Well, you can see I'm not a litter bug, or I've been thrown it away already. Oh, but crying out loud, Commissioner. At least tell me what you think I did. Commissioner, there's a call for you. Mac, he called again, the same man, just a minute ago. He says he's going to kill me. Okay. 
I've been worried about you. I'm fine. I mean, how often does a girl get two guys to make a pass at her in one day? I love it. Oh, uh, really? I was very flattered. Besides, Mildred told me it's been years since she said two guys make a pass at her in five minutes. Uh, so? Really? She asked me to be addressed to the Soho Bar and Grill so she could hang around there, I think. You sure you're okay? I'm fine. Why wouldn't I be? Policeman at the front door, all the locks are changed. Then give me a kiss. That's the only way I'll know you're telling me the truth. You're trembling. Why not? You're still the best kisser in town. All right. Suppose we concentrate on the phone calls. Well, he disguises his voice. I'm sure of that. There was something familiar about it, though, wasn't there? Do you realize what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I know him too. But who? Someone we both know. Who appears to be normal. But who's really very weird. Who does it fit? All of them. Well, I'm just going to sit right down here and think about all of them. One by one. Then you'll go out of your mind. I think I already have. You know, we're not getting anywhere. Well, if I weren't so afraid of having a bad dream, I'd say, let's go to bed. No, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> By trying to entice him into a trap, she rejected him. I'm not surprised he threatened to kill her. I never should have allowed Sally to go there. Don't blame yourself. I knew better, too, Mary, and I'm worried. We're not moving fast enough. Well, I've been going over these suspects in Sergeant Enright's report. Your waiter is a very interesting study. It's got a bright, cheerful exterior, but it conceals a deep inner brooding. Joe Marley's got the kind of ego that makes him think he's a lady killer. On the outside, Henry is a male polyon. To him, the world is a beautiful place, but is it? I went by the bank and spoke with his boss. He says Casey's doing just fine, seems to be adjusting to his new life. But you and I both know if he didn't suffer from hypertension and blackouts, he'd still be on the police payroll. And we still don't know who it is. Is that what you're saying? I'm afraid so. All you can do is just keep a closer watch on Sally as possible. He threatened to kill her, and you can be sure he's going to try to do it. Now, is there any other cheerful news you'd like to hear? So it was a police car. He turned on the panic button. Suppose we should know it.
Commissioner McMillan. Police Unit Y 33 in pursuit of green Ford sedan, license number Tom Tom Nora 440. Headed for intersection of Sutter and Maybell. $695. Clean as a whistle. There's a McMillan again. Give me Sergeant Enright. It was right here on the lot, sir. Of course I didn't know it was missing. You know how many cars I got on this lot? But it was missing. The engine's still hot. Do you leave ignition keys in all these cars? Why not? We're open all night. Besides, where would I hang that many keys anyway? Get mixed up, I'd have a locksmith Anything, there you Jimmy? wouldn't believe. No prints inside, sir. Just like it says on the windshield. Clean as a whistle. You won't find any on the outside, either. The lot boy just wiped it down. Check it anyway. Yes, we sir. We run a tight ship at O'Hara. The man who stole it obviously wore gloves. Because he knew it would be traced. You sure nobody saw him take it or bring it back? You know how many cars I got on this lot? No. How many cars do you think he has, Commissioner? Come on. It couldn't be Casey Mack. He's such a sweet person. Well, that's what he says about you, you know. Hey, Mack, really? Sally, I have to explore every possible direction. We work that stake out of the Soho very carefully. Only someone with experience would be able to figure it out, like a former cop. You're zeroing in on Casey. No. I'm zeroing in on everybody. We have to figure it out, no matter who it is. I agree. But making a phone call to a booth at Joe Marley's station? How would Casey know about that? Well, he's following you around. He knows everything. And being the smart cop that he is. He might have thrown in Joe as a red herring. Those little chats you've been having with Casey in front of the bank. What were they about? Oh, nothing really. Time of day. Well, it doesn't take... 11 minutes and 14 seconds to discuss the time of day. You clocked us. <laughs> I did. What did you talk about, Sally? I don't know. Casey used to like to talk about his wife. He still grieves for her. He goes to visit the cemetery all the time. Puts little flowers on her grave. He grows those flowers himself. He has a hothouse behind the place where he lives. You just said it. I did. Mm -hmm. The violets. Casey knew they were my favorite flowers. No, no, no. I know they're your favorites. But when I went to the florist to buy you some, they were out. So you brought me those roses. They were nice. Violets are seasonal, unless you have some way of controlling it. Hothouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I think I'll have a little chat with Casey. Why do we always have to get our best clues at bedtime? Here, sir, moonlighting as a night watchman. Then he works all day at the bank. I don't know how he does it. Can't be helping his hypertension any. Casey? Casey?
Please, Casey. Give me the gun. Get the light switch in, right? Why, Commissioner? What are you two guys doing here? Find out why you tried to kill us. Me? Try to kill you? That's right, where you worked, not ten minutes ago. Fellas, I've been here for an hour, maybe more. Why weren't you at work? Now, look, Commissioner. You know, I work all day at the bank and all night at the garage. And what's a man gonna do? Sometimes I slip over here, tend my flowers, get a little sleep. And the guy who comes out in the morning punches out for me. Nobody's the wiser. That is, up until now, anyway. I'll check with that guy today, Commissioner. You could do that. I want you to. He'll tell you. What about now, Casey? Why the gun now? Well, you see, I thought it was this vandal again. You know, some bum has broken into here three different times. Here, look. You see where the guy busted my lock. Well, tonight I figured I'd leave the lights out in the house, so he thought maybe I could trap this guy back here. You know, it's a funny thing. All this guy ever steals is my violets. <laughs> yeah, but a handful. Hey, take a look. Yeah, see what I mean? I love you. Casey, I'm gonna have to take you in for questioning. But, but why? What's that thing you just found? This one says, oh, you kid. Now, look, Commissioner. Now, why would you think I'd try to kill you over that garage when I wasn't even over there? The questions I'm going to ask you are about the murder of a purse snatcher named Willie Blaine. Oh, this is a frame. Now, you know it's a frame. You've always been against me, Mac. Now, you could have kept me on the force, but you wouldn't. And you know your wife likes me, too, maybe too much. And now you're out there. Fix my oh, wagon for up. good, aren't you? You're talking like a yeah, it's been quite a vendetta you've been having all these years. You know, now I know who broke in here. Even scattered evidence around. Didn't even know anything about. Really believe Yes, that. I can believe it, and I do. Listen, Mac, nobody's gonna put no hustle over on me. Nobody! Not even you! That's enough! Take I your hands off me, you <laughs> Put 
put out an APB on him. Hey, Jim. Uh, oh, wait a minute. A five doesn't fit there. You don't have to be in. Yeah, this deal. Yeah, you deal this time. Say, you sure you're on a little edgy tonight? No, no. A thousand times, no. Mm, well, you know what Hemingway said about people who protest too much. Hemingway? I know what Shakespeare said. What did Hemingway say? Uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, you know how those fellas are. They all, uh, think alike. Anyway, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to take advantage of you. I mean, uh... Seeing that you owe me three dollars and twelve cents already. Ready? You're the one that said you. No, not me. Nobody's threatened my life. Wish me I could get off. Yeah, right. It's getting kind of late. Well, if you'd like to go on to bed. Oh, who's tired? I mean, we've only played uh, six, seven, eight, fourteen games so far. Why do you keep looking at the front door? You know the lock was changed. Do I keep looking at the front yes, door? Yes, you do. And there is also a policeman guarding the door. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I know there's a policeman guarding the door, and that's why I'm not nervous. Oh. I think that's enough, Melvin. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, what's that? I think it's the wind. It hasn't been a windy night. It's probably getting ready to rain. Or somebody's getting ready to break in. For heaven's sakes, would you get a grip on yourself, Mildred? It's you I'm worried about. No, it's me I'm worried about. Mildred, there is nobody trying to break in. Well, somebody's making a lot of noise not trying to break in. It's the wind. Oh, Can't you see it? Hey, windy wind. nights. Let's just go to bed, Mildred. We have no idea when no old man is going to be home. Oh, yeah, you're going to leave me here just like that, right? Listen, wouldn't you like to take another crack at getting your $3.12 back? I'd be an easy mark now, I promise. Well, good night, Mildred. And thanks for staying up with me, so I wouldn't be nervous. Yay. You open it and let that policeman in, okay? You can open that door for anybody. I'm not gonna open it. Well, neither am I. We'll go together. What's the matter with you two? Mac, there is somebody out by my window. I just saw him. Yes, sir. Someone was here, all right. Get a print on it right away. Yes, sir. What I don't understand is how you could let Casey get away from you in the first place. A man you know tried to kill you. In the first place, I didn't let him get away. He escaped. And in the second place, I don't know, it was Casey who tried to run us down in the garage. Who else would it have been? Or is that particular garage a hangout for psychos? I'm afraid I agree with him, Mac. Are you sure you don't blame yourself for forcing Casey's retirement? No, a man with hypertension shouldn't be on the force. He could kill without meaning to. He could also kill meaning to. And right now, he's out there prowling the streets with a hothouse full of evidence against him. He's much too good a cop to sprinkle clues around like that. He left those clues because he's off his rocker. Now, ask Marion. Anybody in a state like that could leave dozens of clues without even giving it a second All thought. All right, I put out an APB on him. There can't be too many places a man like Casey could run. Well, I hope for your wife's sake that's true. I'll see you. And besides, I don't think Casey's the answer. Why? What do you mean? The footprint outside our window last night. It's a size 8. Casey's a size 10. Who's an 8? Okay, okay, I didn't show up for work. What's it to you? You didn't even call in. No, well, I haven't even been out of bed yet. Why? Where were you last night? I was out. The commissioner asked where you were last night, Joe. I was bar hopping. I got a little loaded. Where? I started at uh, Kim's Corner, and after that, I, 
Oh, I don't remember. The reason I didn't show up for work, I, I'm shaking so much, I, I can hardly stand. Were you at my house last night? Where would I go there? That's what we're here to find out. As I told you, I don't remember where I was. Well, think, Joe. Uh, all right, all right. Well, I got a headache yesterday afternoon. I, I, I felt lousy after that hollow blow at the station. After four or five drinks, I began to really get sore about it. I mean, why me? Why do you pick on me? And then I got steamed. And, and then, then what? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not sure about the rest. Okay. Tell us anyway. Uh, it, it's it's pink elephant time, I, and I get that way sometimes on my drink. Yeah, I I thought I saw your wife walk into the place, and by the time I realized that it wasn't her, <laughs> well, I, I made a fool of myself, and they, they kicked me out of the place. Then what did you do? I, I walked. I mean, that, that's all I remember, is I walked. Why did you end up at my house? I don't know where I ended up, except that I ended up here, finally, in my own bed. I mean, so what if I did go to your house? Is that a crime? Well, what do I do, break a window or set fire to the house? What are you going to charge me with, drunk walking? Book him. Book me? What's the charge, sir? Drunk walking. Commissioner, Joe Marley insists he didn't know this was your front door key. You mean somebody slipped it in his pocket? Mm -hmm. You believe that? No, sir, I don't. And the cast from the footprint fits his shoe exactly. I think he's our man, sir. I certainly hope so. I know what you and Mrs. McMillan have been going through. Yes. Your wife's on the line, sir. Oh. Hiya. Matt Casey just called. He asked me not to tell you, but he's going to try and clear himself. He says he's going to look for the man that killed Willie Blaine. I'm glad you didn't tell me. The other reason that I called is that I'm beginning to feel like the prisoner of Zenda. Just as long as you don't begin to look like him. Thanks a lot. Got any time to help me break over the wall? This way, please. What a pleasure to see you again so soon, madame. And you too, commissioner. Oh, Excuse thank me. you. Ingo. Yes, sir. Would you like a drink? No. I'll be back instantly. I don't think I'll have a drink either. Sure is great to be out of the house, even with the forces of law watching over us. Not bad looking for a policewoman. Harriet? Hmm, not bad. Great legs. <clears throat> oh, uh, oh, you were saying? I was saying that it's a little suspicious that you brought me back here to lunch so you could get another look at Ingo, our waiter, the suspect. Whatever happened to Joe Marley, the suspect that you have in custody? Same as with Casey, too easy. Plenty of incriminating evidence, all of it could have been planted on him. But Joe was outside our house, wasn't he, Mac? Drunk because police were swarming all over his gas station that afternoon. Two suspects, both with incriminating evidence. But only one maniac. Well, one and one just doesn't add up to one, does it? No, it doesn't. We're overlooking someone. Ah, so intent upon one another. They are oblivious to all around them. What a lovely way to go through life. I can recommend one Three and four. How's two? Superb. I'll have a BL and T on rye. Uh -huh. And madame? I'll have number five. In My color. favorite. <laughs> Marley was questioned by a team of detectives, but with his lawyer sitting right beside him, we finally had to let him go. Who furnished the lawyer? I don't know. He had it one call, and I suppose he called the man who owned the gas station. You know what I don't understand is he was boiling mad when he hung up, but that lawyer was there an hour later. I still consider Marley a suspect. I still consider everyone a suspect, which is why I'm starting all over again, right from the beginning. Thank you. 
Why, Henry. Oh, hello, Commissioner. I do believe you're a bookie. Now, you can't prove that, Commissioner. You'll never be able to prove it. Relax. That's not what we're here to talk to you about. Henry, do you know this man? I'm not sure. His name is Willie Blaine. Well, he may have bought a newspaper from me, but I meet so many people every day, it's hard to say, huh? Henry, let me ask you a question. Yeah, sure. How long have you been acquainted with my wife? Oh, for a long time. Why, well, she was just out of high school when she first came by. Sometimes with her father in those days. <laughs> She's a wonderful woman, Commissioner. Always so pleasant, so friendly. I never have to tell her to have a happy day. She always does. Nobody can deny her that, and never will. And as for you being married to her, that must be the dream of a lifetime. Oh, it is, yes. Thank you, Henry. All right. Have a happy day. What do you think, Commissioner? What do you think, Mac? I think it's very strange behavior. I think it's very flattering. Very strange. I remember the days when it used to be nice to get whistled at. Of course, I always pretended to be very insulted, but still, it was very nice. Hold it right there! Was he able to tell you who shot him? Nope. Still unconscious. Poor Casey. Why did he have to go and try and solve it himself? I don't know. But apparently he did solve it. And if he can solve it, why can't I? Well, my father would say, look into his past. Who does he know and see that you don't see? Or who do I know and see that I don't really see? Who do you suppose? What is it, Mac? You're onto something. It's what Henry said. He said there's never a need to wish you a happy day because you always have one anyway, and nobody can deny you that and never will. You're thinking that the day my purse was snatched, someone did try to deny me a happy day. But never will again, because he's dead now. Oh, Mac, you cannot go by what Henry says. He's always talked very flowery. No, there's more. What are those things he wears? Finger gloves. Yeah, finger gloves. Well, everybody that deals in newspaper and magazines use those. I mean, it's very common, Mac. Yeah. And convenient. Especially if you decide to steal a car from a used car lot. No fingerprints. Commissioner, this is a surprise. Is it, Henry? I should think you'd be expecting me. I don't know what you're talking about, but you should have called first. I, I'm so ashamed to have you see the place looking this way. I, I don't like living like this, you know? That's, that's, that's why I'm a puppy. Saving up for a house like this? My wife once said in a magazine interview that she always wanted a house on a cliff overlooking the sea. You remembered that interview, didn't you? That's why this is hanging here. You never got her a house like that. You're the one that's been following her, aren't you? But listen, I, I, I won't follow her anymore now, Commissioner. And you murdered Willie Blaine, didn't you? He, he hurt her. He hurt her. Why would you want to hurt her? Because she lied to me. She betrayed me. I told her to go alone to the Soho, but you went with her. I saw you and the others. So you went to the gas station and telephoned. I was very mad at her. You threatened to kill her. But then I thought it over, and I decided that it wasn't her. It was you. The you who overheard her make that date with me, and that you wanted to hurt her by not letting her see me. So you tried to kill me in the garage? Yes. I wanted to kill you then. But not now. Not anymore. Why not? She said it was wrong. Who? The lady. She said I should leave you alone. That it was Sally who rejected me. Sally loved me very much. And that all I had to do was to let her know how much I loved her. So when I saw that man, 
grab her purse, and he gave her a shove. I couldn't stand it. I got sore. So I figured I'd show her just how much I love her. The lady who said it was wrong, she's your psychiatrist, isn't she? Yes. Hi, Marion, how are you? Do you always answer the door yourself? No, I sent Mildred to the movies. Come on in. I mean, how long can you listen to a lady tell you, don't be nervous, don't be nervous, just because someone's trying to kill you? Well, I'm not so sure she should have left you alone. Oh, she didn't want to. But I pointed out to her that even if there was any trouble, she'd be a very little help. She's kind of a small lady, you know. Would you like some coffee or tea or something? I'd love some tea. Okay, make yourself comfortable. Her answering service usually has a number where she can be reached, but not this time. Well, don't you think that's strange? I mean, for a doctor? And she doesn't answer her door, though. You don't think there's anything wrong? Well, I'd just like to make sure. Well, normally I don't do this, of course. But since you are the commissioner and such a good friend of hers, she's always mentioning your name. I think I can manage from here, thank you. Oh, well, if you need me, I'll be just down the hall. I just heard the verdict. Congratulations, Mac. Oh, Mary, and I could never have done it without your help. Anytime. You know that. Oh, Mac, wasn't that a great game? Yes, I was just saying. We that... must be good luck for the team. They win every time we're here. Interesting.
Did Mac ask you to stop by? Do you know I had no idea how late it is? It's almost 8.30. I saw him about 7. 7. And he was still at the office, right? Yeah. Oh, that's my Mac. Maybe I'll give him a call. I, I took the other phone off the hook. It disconnects all of them. Sally, not yet. Not, not, not unless you want me to kill the policeman first. I'm sorry, Commissioner. That line has been temporarily disconnected. I think you've worked out the perfect crime, Dr. Marion. You convince one of your patients to kill me, and then you have Mac all to yourself. That's not going to work, Marion. You know that. Of course. I realize he won't love me as much as he loves you. At least not in the beginning. But maybe as time passes. The gun down, Marion. No, it's too late. If only you hadn't gotten here so soon. You would have blamed Henry. I know you would have. You're not going to solve anything by killing us. Oh, I'm not, huh? Old pal. Old buddy. The best friend a girl ever had. That is, whenever you needed a little help on a court case. Oh, but when you didn't, it was just goodbye, Marion. You are staring at a case history of an unrequited love, Sally. Love? You call it love when you have a gun pointing at him? Sounds more like hate to me. Hate. Jealousy. Frustration. Loneliness. Rejection. That's the stock and trade of a psychiatrist. A garbage can where people dump their misery. Who oh, should know better than I? Marion, we've always tried. Tried to what? Be kind to Orphan Annie. The lady with a brilliant future. Living in the vacuum of her own private hell. With no place to go but crazy. You can still be helped. Oh, yes, I can. I can, but you and Sally can't. And when that cop comes running in from outside, there won't be any more help for him either. There's no cop out in front. I sent him around the back. He's coming up behind you right now. It's true. I went to your apartment. I saw your... Your room. I knew Sally was in trouble when I came here. I've seen you bluff in court, Mac. I'm sorry. You're just not that good. Don't move, Dr. Voigt. see a woman. Marion. When he was thrown out, she followed him. And she managed to slip our house key into his pocket? Boy, she's sure into a lot of trouble to point the finger at everybody else. Yes. She even had Henry steal the violets from Casey's hothouse and place a little candy hearts there. How's Casey doing? Oh, he's gonna be great. He said you could have acres of violets any time your little candy heart desired. <laughs> what about Henry? Henry spend the rest of his life saying, have a happy day at all the doctors at Napa. Poor Marion. She'll probably end up there, too. 
too, I expect. Unrequited love. That's so sad. How about 